Yo, I'm LaserVisc, and I needed something for April. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a long, long, long series. And with any typical series that goes on for this long, in this day and age, there is typically a video game to coincide with it. And JJBA is no exception. So I'm gonna go over the wacky history of these and then go back to listening to the FLCL soundtrack on repeat. In 1993, one JoJo game came out as expected, and it was a Super Famicom exclusive, being the only JJBA game to only be released on one console. And if what I can see, it wasn't a bad one, it focused on Stardust Crusaders exclusively, the third and arguably most popular part in the West of the entire series. And there isn't really much to talk about, so I went to the comment section on this video, and... Oh god. Oh god. Unlike last time, there's a lot to talk about for this one. JoJo's Heritage for the Future is a standard fighting game, and today is probably one of the most actively played of any of these games. It's greatly balanced most of the time. And it has some really good examples of fighting game archetypes, and though it's only limited to part 3, which sadly means no Okuyasu, though this does somehow work in its favor, and it allows us to get wildly different characters, and freeing up some character slots so we can get weird minor villains like Mariah, Anubis Polnareff, or that one guy who had Anubis before Chakra. Also, due to the time it was released, it's got this amazing balance of detail and style in its pixel art, which is just something I really like. I mean, if you watch this horrible, horrible video, then you know that I like really good pixel art. And much like a game like Team Fortress 2, this really weird style choice helps a lot in its favor to stand up to the test of time. And I could honestly make this its own video, but I'm kind of in a clench for time, so... Geo Geo's Bizarre Adventure is the first game to venture out of the Stardust Crusaders Part 3 part, and yet again we do skip Okayasu and we go straight to Part 5, Bento Oreo. This game is also the first one that ventures into the third dimension, and it isn't any of that lame Halo 3D, it's that radical PlayStation 2 3D. Which you know what that means, hell yeah, Polygonal Mista. And all in all, for the time, this is a pretty good game. I mean, it's got Giachao. What did you expect? This man has ice powers, and he's a Beatles reference. You get to play through the Part 5 story, and I do think if any game were to get this kind of treatment where it's just one part playing through the story, it should have been Part 5. As when comparing the minor antagonists of Part 5 to something like Part 3, it's apparent that these guys are way better than Guy in the Car. And also, a little off topic, this game really reminds me of Jet Set Radio, which is a great and awesome game. Um, it's cool. Overall, I'd give it like a red out of a blue. Alright, it's 2006 now. You know how like 30 seconds ago I said that part 5 would be the best part for these single part only games? Yeah, well, part 1 would probably be the worst. And so they made one in spite. Simply titled JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood, this game is a typical anime arena fighter beat em up or something. It mixes a ton of genres together and just straight up makes up a lot of plot points and characters whenever it feels like it, but I do think the new, rather, bizarre characters bring a lot to the game as a whole. I mean look, we got a literal 12 year old, a police zombie, and we can't forget breaths A and B. I mean, you can play as 15 different Jonathans and 7 different Dio's, and since I can't play this game, this wiki article and video are the only things to base this on, so I guess I'd give it a- Oh my god, finally. He's finally here. Shigechi is in a video game. I love this game. It's a 2.5D fighter with mainly quarter circle inputs, but there are a few traditional ones. Now, at first glance, it just looks like kind of Street Fighter with a new coat of paint and a little slower, which it basically is, but this one button changes it and differentiates it from the competition. Differentiate? Differentiate? Is that right? The A button in this game. Oh god, have I never ever loved the A button this much. For each character, the A or X or the bottom button, you know, unless you're Satan. 
and whatever happens when you hit this button determines what kind of class you are, or other way around, however you want to look at it, it works both ways. There's six different kinds of classes of characters, but only four really matter, being Hamon, Stand, Mounted, and Vampire. And the rest are just for like a few specific characters that lie in like an odd gray area. Holding the A button for a Hamon character charges this meter, which allows you to do special high damage moves like this. Sick as hell, right? Well, no because literally everyone can do it, so it's really extremely lame. But for a stand character like Shigechi, or, you know, that guy, it activates your stand, which completely changes all of your button inputs and is really cool. Look at what it does with Okayasu. This is the most minor change, and the one without the stand is just useless. Why would you want to engage on your opponent when you are weaker? It just doesn't make sense. And for mounted characters, it does the exact same thing. You just go off your horse. You know, it, it, it does nothing. There's literally no change between this and stance. It is the exact same thing. Why does this exist? Oh yeah, and vampirism exists, and it does literally nothing to benefit you. I'm pretty sure you can't play on stages with sunlight. That is the only thing. That is the only trait. Pressing the A button doesn't do anything. That's that's all it is. And due to this sole difference, it plays very uniquely when it comes to fighting games, and the shimmy system, as I like to call it, or, you know, just moving into the background, or whatever, works as basically a Smash Bros. spot dodge, allowing you to dodge his attack and then end up back on top of the fight, which is a really cool mechanic, and I like it a lot. Yeah. Overall, this game is a extremely unique fighter. I wouldn't say that it's extremely, you know, competitively viable, but it's pretty, it's pretty fun just playing it offline like I did too much. Overall, I love it. I'd give it a not good. Alright, Eyes of Heaven. This game is extremely unique when it comes to these games that I'm talking about. It's not very unique when it comes to just games. And I'm not gonna buy it, nor play it, because it's $60. And I don't want to pay $60 for a video. I'm broke. Does it look like I'm gonna pay $60 for a YouTube video? Alright, so, Eyes of Heaven. This game is a arena anime fighter thing. And it's not in-depth at all. Each character has about four moves, and though it does have a lot of characters, each character basically equates to a good third or fourth of a character from a game like All-Star Battle or Heritage for the Future. Because man, I would love all of these characters to get the Heritage for the Future treatment. I mean, Diego is awesome, and him turning into a dinosaur and doing a sick combo? That would be cool as hell. And this game kind of delivers on that, I'm not exactly sure, so, you know, I'm just gonna move on, um, alright, I lied, that wasn't every single game, there's actually three more, four if you were gonna count the Battle Royale, which I'm not, ah, uh, let's talk about the mobile games now, alright, going in chronological order, we have Stardust Shooters, coming up first. And you know it's gonna be fun researching this game when it doesn't have a Wikipedia article and it is genuinely just not in the US, so I can't play it. But luckily, some people aren't in the US, so they can play it. And I can watch YouTube videos because I know how to use the internet. And yeah, I mean this game is basically like Angry Birds Pop. There's not much to it. But it is a gacha game, which if you haven't heard about it, is basically just pay for JPEGs. You know, it's spirits in Smash Bros. if you had to pay $100 to get the spirit you wanted, and it was all loot boxes. But the way I justify it in this game is that instead of just collecting JPEGs, which, you know, you are doing, you're collecting frogs. And frogs are awesome. I love frogs. Look at him. He, he, has, a, he has a Zeppeli hat. He, this one's Kira. Look at the Kira frog. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond Records is an actual fighting game, and it looks pretty big for something that is on something that is not pretty big. And don't come at me with that, oh, we could've fly to the moon with our phone. No, you can't. I can't even play Angry Birds on my phone, okay? 
I cannot fly to the moon with a phone. It doesn't work. I jump on it. It doesn't go to the moon. Joseph's Bizarre Adventure Diamond Records was discontinued after it changed from a typical fighting game beat-em-up thing to a turn-based fighting game and basically erased people's characters and the fun in the game. So let's talk about some cool stuff now. Now is the last video game, Pitter Patter Pop, and unironically, this might be the favorite game I've talked about. This game is a gotcha game, but I mean, look at it. They turned a literal Nazi into a little chibi character. They did it twice, and this game is basically if you were to mix just like Candy Crush with Tomodachi Life, but look at it. It's Giorno, but he's a frog. I love this game. There's just something about it. It's Maybe it's the art style. I mean, they got Darby in it. There is something about this game. Look at Shigechi. And I know this is a good game, but I really can't forgive it. Look at what they did to Coco Jumbo. You are my shine.